Eddie Lakin used to be a chef in fancy restaurants. Now he just wants to make you the perfect old school hamburger. I stopped by one morning to ask him how he arrived at his versions of the American classics. Chuck has a natural 80-20 ratio of lean to fat. So you don't really need to mix to get your ratio. And I tried doing some mixing with, I tried ribeye, brisket, and short rib. And I didn't really notice much of a difference. And for the added expense that those cuts represent, it didn't seem worth it to me. So we keep the meat in the freezer for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. And we have all the grinder parts in the freezer too, so everything's super cold when we grind the meat. It gives you it gives you a better grind if the meat is firm when you grind it. And it makes sure that your the grinder doesn't overheat. Because if it overheats, then the fat will start to melt and the finished product will be almost like the equivalent of a broken sauce. The first grind here is not as photogenic as the second grind. So there was a really fatty piece that came out. Yeah. So that just get mixed mm -hmm. together reasonably well that's, in the second grind? That's the second grind, right, exactly. Second grind, I got that from my Michael Ruman's book. Oh. <laughs> in your background, I mean, hamburgers really weren't a, a big part of no, what you cooked. Really not. I mean, honestly, the only time I ever ground meat was at Nacional, we did chorizo, and at True, we would use trim, and we would grind it to make staff meal. So, you know, you're not really too concerned with technique in those kind of situations. Well, it's not seen how it was, but I was really, I was just a line cook and I was just doing what the guy told me to do. And I try to kind of let it fall into there rather than smashing it down because I really want to try to keep as much air in the mix as I can. I want it to be, I don't want it to be all compressed because that's one of the major differences between our burgers and the commodity burger is that they're so pressed and smashed and compressed that it's t it can be tough. You get almost like a rubbery snap out of it when you eat it. And if you, with a fresh beef burger, it should be um, it should be crumbly and loose. It's not rocket science. The fries were a lot harder. It's not rocket science, and yet. There's so few places doing that. Why yeah, do you... I, I don't understand, honestly, why it's it's not. I guess you know, ordering a box of burgers is a lot easier than doing this, but the finished product is drastically better with this fresh beef. I mean, it's there's like no comparison, and it's it's strange to me that, especially when you get up into like the eight to ten dollar burger range that people are still buying burgers. You mean frozen patties? Yeah, buying frozen patties, right. And I think those traditions kind of just got established and then expectations got lowered and people don't really think twice about the frozen hockey puck. And it's come, that's come to be a good burger. Surprise. Everybody told me Cut the fries and then let them go in running water. And let them go until the starch runs clear, until the water runs clear, there's no more starch. You gotta move them around a bunch of times. And then I, when I tested them like that, I didn't like what I got. It was a too clean of a fry, it was too perfect. And I wanted it to be more, you know, you get that kind of almost crispy and chewy thing. And sometimes they stick together and there's little underdone parts. That's what I wanted. All right, so this is the first step of a two-step fry process. All right, this is blanching. We're going at 300 degrees, and we're going in six minutes. So we're basically cooking the potato all the way through. These will probably get used tomorrow. I'm, I stay a day ahead because I find that they actually come out better if they sit in the cooler overnight after they're blanched. There's a couple that didn't make the final cut. The, the uh, Taylor Street fries were originally called Al's fries, and kind of a tribute to Al's on Taylor Street. But uh, I've got an Al's franchise around the corner here, right? So I didn't want to invite any 
issues, so I changed it to Taylor Street Fries. And I was gonna do a Manny's Fries, where I was gonna use like a, the, the, tr the trim bits of pastrami and corned beef, and then top it with uh, either coleslaw, or I think there was Thousand Island dressing involved, cr sauerkraut, and then the, originally we had a corned beef and a, and a pastrami sandwich on the menu too, or Rubens, but those didn't make the final opening menu, so the mayonnaise fries got scratched. Buffalo, oh, Old Fries is a, is a tribute to Patty's. Patty's Diner, right. sure. Uh, and we, and I, that so, Which means what, what are they? They're old, they, uh, they're the fries that, that die in the holding bin. We take them and put them in a different container and let them hang out until someone orders old fries and then we fry them again. So they get old and kind of shriveled and uh, they dry out a little bit and then we fry them again and they get really crunchy, dark brown, kind of hollow inside. They lose almost all that potato-iness and they just are crunchy. They have to legitimately be of a certain vintage. They have to be old. They can't just be fried long. It didn't work. Yeah, ice again? This is it. This is what I do. I grind beef and I make fries. Six days a week. It's been interesting because, you know, it's been seven or eight months that I've been setting this whole thing up and working on getting the equipment in place and the lease and everything and now that it's all here it's like oh thank god now we can open and everything can go back to normal and now my life is starting to establish this pattern of like six days a week i get up at 6 30 come to the restaurant cut up a couple of chuck plots grind the beef blanch the fries and it's like you know you start to be like oh my god am i going to be doing this for like five years six days a week every day and i will Hopefully, we stay open that long. Watch the latest Sky Full of Bacon podcast and watch for the next one coming soon.